Have you heard of the WHO, the World Health Organization? They're a small organization, small, uh, that has been around since 1948, and they've got some pretty solid information on their website and pretty solid information all around. And they've got some good stuff in regards to infant feeding. In fact, the WHO, as well as the Australian government, have some pretty solid dates as to when we should be introducing solids to our babies. And their recommendation is around six months of age. So why is it then that we get so confused and we get told to start feeding baby solids prior to even four months? My name is Christian Flutter. Let's talk a bit about when we should be introducing foods. So first up, there's a lot of confusion in regards to when we should be giving our children solid foods. You know, some resources say four months of age, some say six months of age, some say between four months and six months of age, some say nothing until six months of age. And we can get very uh, mixed up as to whereabouts we source our information. One health professional might say four months, followed by the next health professional saying six months. And the reason for this is there's a mishmash of the reasons as to why we should be introducing foods. See, there are actually two components as to why we're giving solids to our babies. First up, nutrition. And secondly, the allergies. And it is the allergic component that we often get very confused with. See, in Australia, around 10% of babies have a challenge proven allergy to some of the bigger allergic substances in our diet. And as a result, we start looking to see when we should be introducing solids to help reduce the effect of that allergy. And recent research has shown that we're looking between four and seven months to have the ideal window of opportunity for allergy prevention or reducing the risk of developing that allergy. Now here's the fun part. What happens if we introduce foods too early? See, one of the big things when we introduce foods early like this is it hasn't allowed the gut time to mature. And when a gut is immature, it actually, it's a little bit permeable. So stuff can go in and out. And that's actually a place that we can develop allergies from. So not only are we increasing the risk of allergies developing, we start to increase the risk of developing infection. We increase the risk of obesity. We also increase the risk of stopping breastfeeding earlier than what we should. And in fact, it's been stated that under six months of age, there is no benefit nutritionally for the child to be having solids earlier than that six months of age. But then what about the other side of the scale? What if we introduce food too late? Well, if we introduce food too late, there's two possibilities. Firstly, we may not have adequate nutrition coming through. See, at six months of age, an infant's iron and zinc requirements shoot up, but breast milk alone is unable to maintain the requirements, especially for iron. So this is why we find around six months, we start introducing solids to get that extra source of iron in for that developing brain. And in fact, that's why a lot of formulas are iron fortified to ensure that that child is getting adequate iron coming through. But the second reason is if we introduce too late, we start to increase again our risk of allergies. So after six months of age, it's all about nutrition. But prior to six months of age, it's all about allergies. Now, this is where it becomes really interesting. See, if we're only doing things for a little bit of an allergy, we actually don't need to be ingesting a lot of food. And in fact, it's a salivary challenge that we need to be doing as an introduction of that food. See, a salivary challenge is when we stick a little bit of food just at the front of their lips here, and they stick their tongue out and have a little bit of a taste. This little taste is enough to trigger a response here uh, to let us know if there's a bit of an allergy present. But that little bit of an allergy test like that, it's providing adequate amounts start getting their system primed and getting them comfortable with that particular substance. In fact, in 2015 and in 2019, researchers looked at providing little bits of peanut protein to try and reduce the risk of allergy. And in fact, the children that received the protein allergy, not the protein allergy, that received the protein, the peanut protein, had only 3% of their cases developing peanut allergy. In contrast to the control group, which did not get that protein, peanut protein paste, 
where 17% of them have developed that protein allergy. Not protein allergy, peanut allergy. Too many P's in that sentence. They used two grams of peanut protein paste only three times a week. And this reduced the risk of developing allergy in that group compared to the control group who did not get that protein paste down to 3% compared to 17% in that other group. So a very, very small amount. It is almost what's known as a salivary challenge. So what we're doing is we're getting a little bit of the food that we're about to introduce and putting it just on their lips and they stick their tongue out and they have a bit of a taste. Now this tongue taste is actually a particular reflex. This is called the tongue extrusion reflex and it's the way baby pushes food back out again. When they're not ready for food, they will have that reflex present. And in fact, that is one of the indications as to when your baby will actually be ready to start eating solids. If they still have that tongue extrusion reflex and they're pushing food back out, then please keep on giving them little samples, but not a full meal. Now we can also look for other things to see if they're ready too. Are they able to sit themselves upright? This is an important factor for being able to eat. We need to be sitting upright with good head control. If they're flopping over and falling over and making it easy to, or making it difficult to stay upright, this actually makes it a bit of a choking hazard. So we don't like having babies trying to eat when they're not in a very good, well-supported position. Another thing to look for is their interest. Are they actually showing interest in wanting to eat? We want to see them as you bring food to your mouth, they are watching and waiting to get that food into their mouth as well. So being able to sit themselves upright, being able to show interest in what you're eating and having an absence of that reflex, these are key things to be looking for for when we should be introducing solid meals to our child. Now, interestingly, this tends to happen around six months of but then what happens when you've been told that you need to introduce solids prior to that six months of age? What if like your pediatrician says your child needs to have solids from four months of age? Well, this is something that you're going to need to discuss with them as individual cases may have special requirements or special needs to go on particular foods at an earlier stage. And in fact, if your child is showing some of the signs of an allergy, or if they're in a high risk for an allergy developing, such as parents have allergies as well, then it may be wise to actually have your child assessed by a pediatric immunologist, uh, someone to let you see and make sure that you're not introducing something that you shouldn't, because anaphylaxis is not very pretty, and you wanna do this one in a safe and secure manner. But for the majority of kids, Foods can be introduced by around six months of age. We need to make sure that they can sit themselves upright and they're not sticking their food back out, spitting their food back out again, and they're showing interest in what they're eating. But one of the key components is ensuring that you maintain breastfeeding during this entire process. See, at six months of age, even though you're introducing solids, milk is still going to be their major nutritional source. So ensure that you're concurrently breastfeeding. Look at providing samples of the allergenic foods between four and seven months of age, look out for the indicators of them being ready for solids, and ensure that we have a good diversity of solids coming in at the same time. A broad range of different foods helps to reduce our risk of developing allergies as well. But this then raises the question as to which foods should we introduce first? And considering I read a fascinating paper just the other day looking at some of the habits of Australian parents, considering 3.5% of parents involved in this study gave their child at 16 weeks ice cream and 7% gave biscuits and cakes, I think this is something that we need to discuss in a future episode. I'll see you then.